One day after pulling the big express, Gordon had arrived back at the sidings very tired. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones, do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And off he ran laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could get back at Thomas. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. People were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. He fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Hurry up, you, said Gordon. Hurry yourself, replied Thomas. Gordon began making his plan. Yes, said Gordon, I will. And almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon reversed quickly and was coupled to the train. Get in quickly, please, he whistled. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first. This time, Gordon started so quickly they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Gordon's chance had come. Come on, come on, Puff Gordon to the coaches. The train went faster and faster, too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Peep, peep, stop, stop. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last they stopped at a station. Thomas was uncoupled, and he felt very silly and exhausted. Next, he went on to a turntable, thinking of everyone laughing at him. And then he ran on to a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon, now you know what hard work means. Wake up, Gordon, said his driver. A special train's coming, and where to pull it? Is it coaches or trucks? Trucks, said his driver. Trucks, said Gordon. Puh! Gordon's fire was slow to start, so Edward had to push Gordon to the turntable to get him facing the right way. I won't go, I won't go, grumbled Gordon. Don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Edward. At last Gordon was on the turntable. The movement had shaken his fire, it was now burning nicely and making steam. Gordon was cross and didn't care what he did. He waited till the table was halfway round. I'll show them, I'll show them, he hissed. slowly forward to jam the table. But he couldn't stop himself and slithered into a ditch. Ooh, she hissed. Get me out! Get me out! Not a hope, said his driver and fireman. You're stuck, you silly great engine. Don't you understand that? They telephoned the fat controller. So Gordon didn't want to take the special train and ran into a ditch. What's that you say? The special's waiting? Tell Edward to take it, please. And Gordon? Oh, leave him where he is. We haven't time to bother with him now. On the other side of the ditch, some little boys were chattering. Coo, doesn't he look silly? They'll never get him out. They began to sing. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch, fell in a ditch. Silly old Gordon fell in a ditch all on a Monday morning.
Gordon lay in the ditch all day. Oh dear, he thought, I shall never get out. But that evening they lifted Gordon and made a road of sleepers under his wheels to keep him from the mud. Strong ropes were fastened to his back end, and James and Henry, pulling hard, managed to bring him to safety. Late that night, Gordon crawled home, a sadder and wiser engine. Henry was ready at five o'clock. There was snow and frost. Men hustled and shouted, loading the vans with crates of fish. The last door banged, the guard showed his green lamp. The flying kipper was ready to go. Come on, come on, don't be silly, don't be silly, puffed Henry to the vans. The vans shuddered and groaned, trock, trick, trock, trick, all right, all right. That is better, that is better, puffed Henry. Clouds of smoke and steam poured from his funnel into the cold air, and the fire's light shone brightly. Hurry, 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 panted Henry. They were going well. The light grew better. The signal light shone green as they passed. Then a yellow signal appeared ahead. His driver prepared to stop. But the home signal was down. All clear, Henry. Away we go. They couldn't know the points from the main line to a siding were frozen, and the home signal should have been set at danger, but snow had forced it down. A good strain was waiting in the siding to let the flying kipper pass, and the driver and fireman were drinking cocoa in the brake van. The kipper is due, said the guard. Who cares, said the fireman. This is good cocoa. The driver got up. Come on, fireman, back to our engine. They got out just in time. Henry's driver and fireman had jumped clear before the crash. But Henry lay dazed and surprised. The fat controller came to see him. The signal was down, sir, said Henry. Cheer up, Henry. It wasn't your fault. Ice and snow caused the accident. I'm sending you to crew a fine place for sick engines. They'll give you a new shape and a larger firebox. You'll feel a different engine and won't need special coal anymore. Won't that be nice? Yes, sir, said Henry doubtfully. Early one morning, a large policeman was sitting close to the line. Thomas liked policemen. He had been a great friend of the constable who had just retired. Peep, peep, he whistled. Good morning. Thomas expected that the new constable would be friendly too but was sorry to see that he didn't look friendly at all. He was red in the face and very cross. Disgraceful, he spluttered. I didn't sleep a wink last night. It was so quiet, and now engines come whistling suddenly behind me. I'm sorry, sir, said Thomas. I only said good morning. A policeman pointed to Thomas. Where's your cow catcher, he asked. But I don't catch cows, sir. Don't be funny, snapped the policeman. He looked at Thomas's wheels. No side plates either. And he wrote in his notebook. Engines going on public roads must have their wheels covered and a cow catcher in front to protect people and animals from being dragged under the wheels if they stray onto the line. You haven't, so you are dangerous. Rubbish, said Thomas's driver. We've been along here hundreds of times and never had an accident. 
That makes it worse, the policeman answered. He wrote regular lawbreaker in his book. Thomas puffed sadly away. The fat controller was having breakfast. He was eating toast and marmalade. The butler came in. Excuse me, sir, you are wanted on the telephone. Bother that telephone, said the fat controller. <laughs> I'm sorry, my dear, he said to his wife. Thomas is in trouble with the police and I must go at once. At the station, Thomas's driver told the fat controller what had happened. Dangerous to the public indeed, we'll see about that. The fat controller spoke to the policeman. But however much he argued with him, it was no good. The law is the law, he said, and we can't change it. The fat controller felt exhausted. I'm sorry, driver, he said. It's no use arguing with policemen. We will have to make those cowcatcher things for Thomas, I suppose. Percy was left alone. He didn't mind that a bit. He liked watching trains and being cheeky to the other engines. Hurry, 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 he would call, and they got very cross. After a great deal of shunting, Percy was waiting for the signalman to set the point so that he could get back to the yard. He was eager to work, but was being rather careless and not paying attention. Edward had warned Percy, be careful on the main line, whistle to the signalman, you are there. But Percy didn't remember to whistle, so the busy signalman forgot him. Percy waited and waited. The points were still against him, so he couldn't move. Then he looked along the main line. Peep, peep! He whistled in horror, for rushing straight towards him was Gordon with the express. Percy opened his eyes. Gordon had stopped with Percy's buffers a few inches from his own. But Percy had begun to move. I won't stay here. I'll run away, he puffed. He went straight through Edward's station and was so frightened that he ran right up Gordon's hill without stopping. that he was tired but he couldn't stop he had no driver to shut off steam and apply the brakes I want to stop I want to stop he puffed the man in the signal box saw Percy was in trouble so kindly set the points Percy puffed wearily onto a nice empty siding ending in a big bank of earth he was too tired now to care where he went. I want to stop. I want to stop. I have stopped, he puffed thankfully. Never mind, Percy, said the workman as they dug him out. You shall have a drink and some coal and then you'll feel better. Presently, Gordon arrived. Well done, Percy. You started so quickly that you stopped a nasty accident. I'm sorry I was cheeky, said Percy. You were clever to stop. The new engine arrived. What's your name, asked the fat controller. Montague, sir, but I'm usually called Duck. They say I waddle. I don't really, sir, but I like Duck better than Montague. Good. Duck it shall be. Here, Percy, show Duck round. The two engines went off together. Soon they were very busy. James, Gordon and Henry watched Duck quietly doing his work. He seems a simple sort of engine. We'll have some fun and order him about. <laughs> Smoke billowed everywhere. Percy was cross. Duck took no notice. 
They'll get tired of it soon. Do they tell you to do things, Percy? Yes, they do, answered Percy. Right, said Duck. We'll soon stop that nonsense. He whispered something. We'll do it later. The fat controller was looking forward to hot buttered toast for tea at home. Suddenly, he heard an extraordinary noise. Whee! <laughs> Bother, he said, and hurried to the yard. Duck and Percy calmly sat on the points outside the shed, refusing to let the engines in. Gordon, James and Henry were furious. Stop that noise, bellowed the fat controller. They won't let us in, hissed Gordon. Duck, explain this behaviour. Beg pardon, sir? But I'm a great Western engine. We do our work without fuss. But begging your pardon, sir, Percy and I would be glad if you would inform these um, engines that we only take orders from you. Silence! Snapped the fat controller. Percy and Duck, I am pleased with your work today, but not with your behavior tonight. You have caused a disturbance. Gordon, Henry and James sniggered. As for you, thundered the Fat Controller, you've been worse. You made the disturbance. Doc is quite right. This is my railway and I give the orders. After Percy went away, Doc was left to manage alone. He did so, easily. A long stretch of line lay ahead. In the distance was a bridge. It seemed to Gordon that there was something on the bridge. His driver thought so too. Oh, Gordon, he said, and shut off steam. Oh, said Gordon, it's only a cow. Shoo! Shoo! He moved slowly onto the bridge, but the cow wouldn't shoo. She had lost her calf and felt lonely. Moo, she said sadly. Everyone tried to send her away, but she wouldn't go. Henry arrived. What's this? A cow? I'll soon settle her. Be off, be off. Moo, said the cow. Henry backed away nervously. I don't want to hurt her. At the next station, Henry's guard told them about the cow and warned the signalman that the line was blocked. That must be Bluebell, said the porter. Her calf is here, ready to go to market. Percy will take it along. At the bridge, Bluebell was very pleased to see her calf again, and the porter led them away. Not a word. Keep it dark, whispered Gordon and Henry to each other. They felt rather silly, but the story soon spread. Well, 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 chuckled Edward. Two big engines afraid of a cow. Afraid? Rubbish, said Gordon. We didn't want the poor thing to hurt herself by running up against us. We stop so as not to excite her. You see what I mean, my dear Edward? Yes, Gordon, said Edward. Gordon felt somehow that Edward saw only too well. Today, there was a surprise waiting for Edward in the yard. It was a traction engine. Hello, said Edward. You're not broken and rusty. What are you doing here? I'm Trevor. They're going to break me up next week. What a shame, said Edward. My driver says I only need some paint, polish and oil to be as good as new. But my master says I'm old fashioned. Edward snorted. People say I'm old fashioned, but I don't care. The fat controller says I'm a useful engine. 
What work did you do? My master would send us from farm to farm. We threshed corn, hauled logs and did lots of other work. The children loved to see us. Trevor shut his eyes, remembering. Oh yes, I like children. Edward set off for the station. Broken up, what a shame. Broken up, what a shame. I must help Trevor, I must. He thought of all his friends who liked engines, but strangely, none of them would have room for a traction engine at home. It's a shame, it's a shame, he hissed. Then, beep, beep. Why didn't I think of him before? There, on the platform, was the very person. Hello, Edward. You look upset. What's the matter, Charlie? He asked the driver. There's a traction engine in the scrapyard, Vicar. He'll be broken up next week. Jem Cole says he never drove a better engine. Do save him, sir. He saws wood and gives children rides. We'll see, replied the Vicar. Jem Cole came on Saturday. The Reverend's coming to see you, Trevor. Maybe he'll buy you. Do you think he will, asked Trevor, hopefully. He will when I've lit your fire and cleaned you up. The vicar and his two boys arrived that evening. Trevor hadn't felt so happy for months. He chuffered about the yard. Show your paces, Trevor, said the vicar. Later, he came out of the office smiling. I've got him cheap, Jem, cheap. Do you hear that, Trevor? Cried Jem. The Reverend saved you and you live at the vicarage now. Peep, peep, whistled Trevor. Now Trevor's home is in the vicarage orchard and he sees Edward every day. 